HVAC 360, episode number 40, An Ocean. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of HVAC 360. I'm your host, Matt Nelson. This week, we get to talk to uh, Bob Eckery, who is a, uh, a Marcom manager over at Enotion. Now, Enotion, if you haven't heard, you might as well just uh, go to the website, Google it up, uh, get the information out there, because it is one of those technologies that is just, it's groundbreaking. It's, it's really, it's so exciting. Um, if you're in the field of energy conservation, it is something that, that is really just, wow, the possibilities are endless. You know, I, we, we get to talk to Bob, and he kind of explains a little bit about it. Um, and uh, I think that uh, we'll pretty much uh, just uh, go to Bob right now, and I'll catch you on the back end. So here's my interview at the HR Expo with Bob Eckery. Let's cut to the tape. <laughs> We're at the floor of the HR Expo 2012 in Chicago. I'm talking with uh, Bob Ecke. Eckery. Eckery, sorry, Bob. Um, and we're at the InOcean Alliance booth. Now, Bob, can you explain a little bit about uh, the InOcean technology and what how the InOcean Alliance comes into play? Of course. There's an alliance uh, that is built around a central technology which... Uh, encompasses self-powered and wireless sensors, switches, and controllers. It started with a simple light switch that just that was powered just by the motion of pressing the switch was enough energy to be captured and sent out as a radio signal to control lights. From there, it has evolved into solar-powered sensors, such as occupancy sensors, daylight sensors. They're typically powered by indoor light, and so we can take very low um, amounts of indoor light, as low as 50 lux, and that's enough to power these sensors that, again, send radio signals to some sort of a controller or feed that sensor data into a bigger system, such as back, a BACnet system, Lawnmark. We can feed that sensor data into a TCP IP network, and then another system can make smart decisions to, to automate buildings. So in, an ocean is basically a kind of a, a technology, just, a, just a, a, a tool to be used, and the, the alliance is a, is a, a group of uh, manufacturers who actually use that technology? Or, exactly. Or? Currently there's 250 members of the alliance. What's key is they're all interoperable with each other because they all subscribe to the same radio protocol regardless uh, of the manufacturer their controls are going to be able to talk to each other and in addition to that not only are the controls interoperable with with each other within the Notion alliance we're also interoperable with other communication protocols such as tcp ip ethernet the ones i mentioned before uh, backnet so when, where did I guess when when did it start? When did an ocean start? The, the technologies. Uh, we just had our tenth birthday, and uh, that just was at the end of last year, and uh, it's evolved into a big ecosystem where the system integrators have a lot of choices now. When compared to the wire, we're enabling them to stay out of the walls, stay out of the ceilings, and still have the same functionality and the same reliability that we, we've gotten used to with the wire. But especially in like a retrofit scenario, we bypass a lot of the obstacles that have uh, historically stalled the building automation yeah. sy uh, system development. I got I to gotta imagine it, was, it, would be, it would be huge in, in, the, in that renovation market. Now, as far as the uh, uh, different aspects, I mean, obviously, you know, you got the light switch, lighting. What, what are some of the other just general areas that, that you get involved in? I mean, obviously, um, you know, thermostats, I could see thermostats, but uh, just in, in general, what, what are some of the other things that uh, um, you get involved in? Something that's, I think, pretty impressive about the technology, the lighting and HVAC worlds have historically been completely separate. Uh, we have a contractor for lighting, we have a contractor for, for HVAC. With a technology like that, the system doesn't, 
is agnostic to what type of application it is. And so we're bridging the, those, those two historically separate worlds into one by bridging that sensor data via a gateway or something like that. And so the, the same system can control both light and HVAC right now. Now, as, as far as the, um, uh, you know, I could, I could kind of understand, okay, light switches, you, you get into plugs and things like that, you get... Any electrical load we can control in a, a, a good example is in a hotel. They're, one, notoriously difficult to wire. You never see a light on the ceiling in a hotel, and it's because they're very difficult to wire. And they're also unoccupied most of the time. A, a typical hotel room is unoccupied for 14 hours a day. But because uh, so far it's been difficult to retrofit a hotel with building automation controls, we it's it's prime it's a it's rich it's a rich habitat for introducing wireless controls and just real simple stuff. If the room's unoccupied, stop heating or cooling it and turn off the lights, and then a TV or any other electrical load you can uh, automate those shutting off while. Uh, when the guest is gone. So essentially, if you if you have, you could basically, uh, you not only get you know inputs from the devices, whether it be you know a light switch indicating I want to turn the lights on, but you also can say, hey, you know what? Uh, there's a a plug. I can shut that plug off. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can you can send signals to devices, not only just receive signals from devices. Very perceptive. Yes, it, it can come from a light switch or it can come from a sensor. Uh, or it can come from the system, uh, like some sort of brain outside of the room uh, can control that same electrical load. Now, typically, what what sort of, um, you know, obviously there's, there's kind of an open protocol. Have you, are there systems that, you know, or, or uh, uh, people that are adopting this more readily? Because, I mean, obviously there's going to be some programming involved. There's going to be some, you know, uh, addressing of the devices. Mm -hmm. Is that something that, that all the controls manufacturers are doing? I mean, are they are they integrating it? Are there people that are, are ahead of it? Um, yeah. What we're seeing now, typically the, in, the, in its most basic form, you configure a controller to learn which controls to respond to, like a light switch or an occupancy sensor. And you'd put that into learn mode, and then you'd send it a signal, and it would remember that address from then forward. Now we're starting to see our partners develop software that do, does the, the same thing, but in a kind of drag-and-drop world where uh, you, on a PC screen you can say, I want this switch to control zone one, zone two, not zone three. And you'll being able to bridge over to the ether, uh, an Ethernet system um, uh, excuse me, uh, a TCP IP network, it opens up all sorts of possibilities for simplifying which controls interact with each other. Now, how do you know, know when a device goes bad? I mean, inevitably, something's going to fail. Everything does. What happens when it fails? Uh, I'm glad we're talking about TCP IP because that offers uh, remote management. You can be collecting all the sensor data, and in the absence uh, of data not in the absence of data coming in yeah we now have um, a place where those things surface that data surfaces and you can respond to it um, collecting the data is one thing but when you're plugging into another system you can be on the other side of the the world and you can see okay that there's an alarm that was just just triggered and you can respond to that. Now what about things that typically people don't think about uh, as far as being, you know, controllability? I mean, obviously if you get away from the electric side of things and you think of, you know, maybe like, uh, you know, valves or, or, or things like that, I mean, is that, you know, are you controlling valves? Are you con controlling, you know, what, what sort of technology, you know, is at play there or even like, like diffusers or things like that? Absolutely. It's very appropriate here at HR. There's a couple of new products. The first ever self-powered wireless valve. So it can, re it can be communicating with a thermostat. And so that gets us into the skyscrapers that are, are using radiant, radi uh, radiant heat for uh, um, heating the building. Now, the, most of the self-powered controls were on the transmitting side, the light switches and the sensors. Now on the receiving side... We have self-powered devices such as a, an actuator that control, opens and closes valves. Uh, another partner has got a, a damper that 
pushes cold air to the top and hot air down to the bottom of a room, uh, especially in a perimeter of a commercial office space. Uh, again, we're seeing savings of 30% um, just by introducing the technology on the receiving side where the mechanical parts are moving in response to that, that same sensor data we, we discussed previously. Now, I, I, you know, it, it's, it's almost on the verge of being magic, most of these, most of these uh, uh, different technologies that you know, come up with the, an ocean, you know, the light switch without any, any you know, wires to it, or, or the, uh, the valves that are self-actuating. I mean, really, I mean, if, you, if you get into the nitty-gritty of, of the valve, I mean, what, what, what makes it self-powered? What makes it, you know, be able to do that? In that case, it's, it's using differences in temperature, and then it captures that energy, converts it over into usable electricity. But when we're talking about valves, we're also talking about pipes. And at minimum, we need a three-degree differential, where a, uh, a pipe typically provides a lot more than that. It can collect that energy, convert it, and then... Really, um, it's really frugal with the energy. They're they're pretty low power devices, and so they they sleep a lot. But they capture the energy, store it, and then when it when it's time to for a reaction, it's got enough energy stored from that temperature def differential to to move the. To move the the valve. Now, the there, obviously, there's size limitations. I mean, obviously, you can't necessarily have um, you know large valves. I'm assuming They're, are they mostly on the small side, or do you have like you know six inch valves that you're you're self actuating? Six inches. Yeah, they're they're they're, uh, they're smaller valves. Uh, its size is in that ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now, as as far as the. Um, um, Education of it. I mean, obviously, this, this is a really you know keen technology. You know, how can people get educated about how to apply it? You know, best practices, things like that. I mean, is there, is there are there resources for that uh, for them to do that? Absolutely. We're people have already become more comfortable with wireless. We all have cell phones, but we and most people have wanted to throw their cell phone against the wall at some point too. And so there's some trepidation in, in some cases. But what we can do is put issues up in front of our customers like uh, wireless doesn't coexist real well with metal and some people want to put it uh, an antenna in a, in a metal box and the physics of that don't add up very well and so it, there's a, an education process that's taking place just we're taking wireless to a, a different level that within the, the building automation space. So when you have, you know, for instance, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I think when you say that, I think, okay, most valves might be inside of a metal box. How does that, you know, do you have, you actually have an extra antenna that goes outside the box or is that? That's one way to do it. You get, ideally, you get the whole, um, the radio module and the antenna are, are most key, especially the antenna. You get the antenna outside of the box and there's a lot of real easy ways to do that. Excellent. You did just the awareness of, of that issue. Once you're aware of it, it's a, a problem that's very easy to solve. Okay. So if they want to learn more about it, what's the best best way to do it? I mean, it's a, okay. You know. About the uh, the technology, go to enocean.com. It's E N, then the word ocean, and then the ecosystem of manufacturers creating pro magic products for building automation, both lighting and HVAC. Go to the Alliance site, which is an ocean-alliance.org. Excellent. All right. Well, Bob, I appreciate your time here, and I, I, I think it's a great technology that's only getting better, and I think that uh, it's, it's really fitting a, a, a niche in, in what we can do for energy savings uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this market and being a, a really, truly green product. So I appreciate you taking the time. Of course. Thanks for your questions. Great questions. Um, so from the floor of the AHR Expo 2012 in Chicago, this is Matt Nelson with HVAC 360. All right, and we're back. Thanks again to Bob Eckery, uh, doing a great job uh, at an ocean and that technology. I mean, isn't it? I mean, that is truly exciting stuff. I mean, this stuff is, I mean, if you hadn't heard about it before, um, you know, it's going to become your, your, you know, your next best secret. Um, if you have heard about it before, you probably are trying to keep it under wraps. Uh, 
compared to your competition, keeping it from your competition rather. And uh, you know, it's it's very exciting stuff. I mean, just just the endless possibilities. I mean, the Inotion technology is is you know again just this this. Um, you know this nugget of information, this this technology, this this bit of of um, um, just uh, you know uh, the this, this starting point, and it's growing to all these different companies um, who are using this in ocean technology to really kind of kick it up, uh, kick it up an, another level uh, to be able to uh, be more energy efficient and using energy that we already have in the in the system. You know, just being more energy conscious. And uh, there's so many ways to just kind of you know go about this and, and turn it and uh, and be more efficient with it. So uh, in Ocean Technologies, uh, check the show notes. I'm going to have a couple other things there. Uh, you can actually there's a uh, a clearinghouse uh, where you can actually go and and see the different manufacturers and what kind of different products they have. So I'll I'll post that that up on the show notes. Um, other than that. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, if you like what I've been doing, give me a holler at matt at buildingx.co. Uh, that's my direct uh, email. Or you can just go to the website, buildingx.co, and uh, you can leave some uh, comments on the uh, the, the uh, uh, show notes there. Otherwise, if you want to hear, hear uh, what's uh, going on in the newsletter, you can always sign up for that on the front page of buildingx.co. And if you want to follow me on Twitter... And if that's your thing, if not, no big deal. But my p- Twitter handle is at buildingx. So let's see. That uh, pretty much does it for this week. Uh, we got one more show from the AHR Expo, uh, possibly. So uh, hopefully uh, the next week's uh, is. is I'll, I'll try to change it up a little bit. I didn't want to hit too many in a row. But you know, this notion technology, I it just it's just mind blowing. You know, it's like one of those things I could learn about all day. So uh, without further ado, uh, remember to know what you build and share what you know.